Hey guys, and welcome back to That LP Show. The name of the game is Donkey Kong 64. We're here in Cranky's lab getting a brand new ability for all the Kongs, so just come in here with whoever has seven coins, and we get the Super Simeon Slam. Pretty much just a powered up version of the regular Simeon Slam. Uh, not any stronger when it comes to hurting enemies, I don't think, but now we can hit blue switches, so we pretty much need this in order to progress further in the game. One thing worth mentioning, uh, from now on, Whenever we go into Cranky's lab, the first thing that he's going to ask us is if we want to play Jetpack again. So if you're just running in there and mashing buttons to make text progress, just bear in mind that if you press yes immediately after the first question he asks, you're going to be pulled back into the Jetpack game. And that can slow things down and get a little annoying if you just want to get to the part where he gives you your uh, new potion. You know, unless you want to play Jetpack, then you can go ahead and do that to your heart's content. Uh, given that you haven't already unlocked um, two of the Banana Fairies, or no, six of the Banana Fairies, because if you've done that, then you can just play Jetpack from the Mystery Menu anytime you want. Anyway, here we are in the Mushroom Tower, one of the beefier sections of Fungi Forest, and we'll probably be spending uh, the majority, if not all, of this video in uh, the Mushroom Tower here, because there are uh, quite a few things to get with each of the Kongs, so we're just going to be going up and down it all day here. First things first, we have ammo switches for every single Kong here, and we have a conveniently placed tag barrel that we're going to give a workout, hopping inside and out of it in order to shoot all of these. There's no particular order in which you have to shoot these things, so I'm just switching to Kongs at random. I do want to save uh, Tiny Kong for last, though, because we'll immediately be doing something with her as soon as we're done here. There we go. I wasn't 100% sure that I'd be able to make that shot with Chunky from where I was standing. But anyway, yeah, sticking with my plan of going with the most optimized route that at least I'm able to think of, it's probably not the best. I'm going to start with the lowest collectibles and try to work my way up. There's going to be a little bit of backtracking here and there simply because of the placement of the tag barrels, but this is probably the, the most optimized route that I can think of right now. Um, anyways, you saw it. That made some barrel cannons appear. We're going to uh, handle those with Donkey Kong later. It's just a way to get get further up, but there's collectibles on the way, so I want to take the slow route for now. Tiny Kong has the lowest golden banana is, uh, in the Mushroom Tower, so I'm going after that one first. As you can see, we're probably going to be jumping down here soon enough because there's some green bananas there for Chunky Kong, but as far as golden bananas themselves, hers is the lowest right here in this bonus barrel. And it's here we have another Speedy Swing Sortie. Now, real quick, this little tutorial bubble right here tells you to bounce up into the tree to collect the coins. It's suggesting that you use that mushroom right there, but you can just as easily climb up the tree just like this, and you're not really going to waste that much time by doing it. In fact, I've found that when you use the mushroom to bounce up into the tree, it doesn't bounce you up that high, so you run the risk of just hitting the edge of one of the giant leaves on the tree and just slipping off. So every time I attempt to get up on the tree by using that bouncy mushroom, room, I end up falling off and wasting time anyway, so I just climb up it. It's not that big of a deal. And it's a fun little bonus game that lets you have a little platforming challenge using the Kong you're actually playing as in order to test out her skills, like with the ponytail twirls in between the trees. And those are the kind of bonus stages that I like. They harken back to, you know, the original Donkey Kong Cr Country trilogy, where the, the bonus stages, you know, were platforming challenges along the lines of, you know, collect the MacGuffin at the end, or collect a certain amount of these things that disappear and reappear, or whatever, or a simple challenge like destroy all of the enemies. And I wish there were more like that in DK64 instead of these very disjointed and disconnected feeling, you know, bonus games that you have, like with the slot machines. You didn't have anything like that in the original Donkey Kong Country trilogy. They all, they all felt like they belonged in that world. Um, you know, because they were all platforming challenges taking place in the same world that you were in at that point. I, it, it's, I'm kind of like losing my train of thought trying to explain this. Um, uh, but yeah, none of the bonus games in Donkey Kong Country 1, 2, or 3 felt so disconnected. They just, they felt like they belonged in that world. 
And it would be nice if Speedy Swing Swordy kind of stuck with the aesthetic of Fungi Forest. At least that one right there that we just did with Tiny Kong. I think... Where did we do the other one? I, I can't even remember. I think it might have been in Jungle Japes. And it kind of helps that, you know, it looks like it belongs in Jungle Japes. This one should have just had giant mushrooms that we were doing. Kind of like with this bonus challenge right here with Donkey Kong. You know, it looks like it's in Fungi Force. It belongs here. But then again, it doesn't say welcome to bonus stage. So I can't really consider this a bonus stage. It's just kind of an area above Fungi Forest. In fact, this is another incident in where it feels like a bonus game or a little mini challenge. And, it, you know, it rewards you with a bonus game, which I kind of think is redundant. Like, yeah, right here, we're going to shoot ourselves into a bonus game. Welcome to and it's another Peril Path Panic. You, you guys know how to do this. I'm not even going to bother explaining. We're just going to hurry up and run through this as quick as we can. I think it's the last one in the game. But, yeah, that happened to us in the last episode where we did that uh, Fly Through the Rings challenge with Diddy Kong, only to, be, only to be rewarded with a bonus game that we had to play through in order to get a golden banana. That flight challenge should have simply rewarded us with the golden banana. You mean, you're, you're rewarding a challenge with another challenge, and it just, it just feels like padding. As if the game isn't already long enough. Anyway, there we go. We get a golden banana for passing that. After we fall down, he'll eventually collect it. But just like with the other uh, barrel cannon challenges with DK, if you miss any of the collectibles up there, you can simply go back up there as many times as you want in order to try and try and try again. Fortunately, I did that on my first run. I don't think I'm going to be able to uh, do that in any future ones. Well, maybe, I, you know kind of shown a lack of confidence in myself there. But th those barrel cannon challenges do get really, really fast and challenging later on in the game. But, you know, I like it. I Because, like I was just saying before, it, it's, a, it's a bonus challenge that feels like it actually belongs in a Donkey Kong game. Anyway, there are more green bananas uh, for Chunky as we ascend further up the Mushroom Tower. We will be switching back to him after this, but as you can see, there is a purple Kasplat that we need to kill off with Tiny in order to get her blueprint. At least, I'm pretty sure it is purple, <laughs> because on my TV, I think I need to adjust the color on my TV, because it kind of looks blue. During a practice run, I, um thought it was lanky so I switch I, I thought he was blue so I switched to lanky and I you know killed it only to find out that I couldn't pick it up with lanky Kong so yeah I think I need to need to do a little bit of adjusting I'm pretty sure on the actual video it'll have a correct color and look purple but on my TV he looked blue so I probably need to do something about that so that's pretty much it for all the collectibles out here. We only had to worry about some for Donkey Kong and Tiny Kong. It's time to head back into the Mushroom Tower, and for that, we're using Chunky Kong again because he has green bananas all the way up to the very top. So we're pretty much going to be climbing all the way to the top with Chunky Kong, intermittently switching back and forth between a few Kongs to collect a few things on the way, like... Uh, for example, this red Kasplat and these red bananas. We'll eventually be coming here with Diddy Kong. That's actually uh, something we're probably going to be coming back here a little later for. Oh, okay, yeah. The lighting there makes it hard to see those gaps because the, uh, the colors for this grassy area kind of blends in with these Nintendo 64 textures. Fortunately, they're not too far spaced apart, so if you're moving fast enough, you should just be able to grab onto the edge. Okay, before going further up, we want to swing across here very carefully. You know, the lighting kind of messes with depth perception here. And this door right here is only open at night because during the day it's covered with a moon gate. So make sure it's night so you can come out here. And there's nothing out here except for, uh, you know, a single Kasplat for Chunky Kong and a green balloon. So the green bunch of bananas that we grabbed right through right by the door on the other side here should be a good indicator that we need chunky to come through here okay this part usually trips me up there we go sometimes i miss that rope because you know depth perception at this point i i don't know if that's a problem with the game or a problem with me i used to have good depth perception maybe i'm just getting old who knows I'm still convinced that it's all because of the drop shadows not being there, or at least not being very visible. You can see a shadow 
being cast uh, from Chunky right now, but it, it's not a drop shadow. It's not, you know, that visual guide of where you are. And that's all because of the game's, you know, kind of realistic lighting engine. I guess that's the price you pay for making a game look good. Sonic Unleashed had the same problem. Arguably, the single best looking game in the Sonic franchise. But, yeah, no drop shadow for that werehog. And it makes, the, makes some of those stages absolutely frustrating. Anyway, that's it for uh, most of Chunky's collectibles. We're pretty much at the top of the Mushroom Tower. Just wanted to switch to Lanky real quick because he does have a blue balloon somewhere here. Alright, that's kind of far away. wonder if I can... I'll probably just aim over here and... Oh, of course. There we go. Lead the target. That's a tricky one because of its uh, of its speed and its distance from the ledge. You kind of have to predict when it's going to fly onto the screen. Anyway, there's our first little bit of homing ammo right there. We'll probably be using a little bit of it later. Uh, come on, there we go. Trying to do the Oranga stand to get up here. Okay, let's take care of this guy real quick because I don't want him harassing me. And... Let's try to turn the camera and face exactly where that door was down there. Stomp down. Come on, stomp. Thank you. Yeah, we want to be pointed directly in the general direction of that door because, yeah, we have 10 seconds to run down there. And if you don't have the camera angled correctly, then you're going to be somewhere else besides right on top of it. And then it's going to, clo it's going to close before you get a chance. This is a pretty easy challenge. You see the picture up there? Hit the corresponding color of mushroom for the corresponding Kong, working your way up from Donkey Kong and following the arrows on that picture. So purple for Tiny, so yellow for Donkey Kong, red for Diddy, purple for Tiny, green for Chunky, and finishing off this blue one for, come on, for Lanky. And of course they pad things out by rewarding us with a bonus game instead of a golden banana. Whatever. But it's another Crazy Kong Clamor, and this one's really, really fast, but I have a trick. Shoot that first banana, and then start pause buffering, because it moves so fast that you don't have much of a chance to uh, hit it before, it's, before you know, it all goes black again. So if you keep pausing it like I am right now, you can see where the banana is before it's completely faded in, and then while it's paused, you can hold the control stick in the general direction of the banana, and then you can just unpause and quickly mash the A button in order to fire at it. Now, if you're playing the Nintendo 64 version of the game, you shouldn't have to do that. I think most of the difficulty here is caused by a couple of things. Um, the input delay on the Wii U Virtual Console version, and I, I think there is actually an issue... Well, I, I was going to say HDMI pass-through, but I think that's what is causing the input delay is because you know this game wasn't originally intended to be pushed through a high definition cable or uh, to be displayed on a high definition tv so there's kind of um you know th there's a delay because it takes time in order to upscale that image uh, to to fit an hd tv i don't know why that issue would be there though honestly because you know, you, you'd think the Virtual Console would be optimized for that, so I'm just taking a wild guess at that. I'm pretty sure it's caused by input delay. You shouldn't have to pause buffer like that if you're playing this game on an actual Nintendo 64. Anyway, easy challenge here. We're gonna put our we're gonna put our homing ammo to work, taking out these zingers, and then we just bounce on the mushrooms to grab the golden banana. Once again, made difficult by the fact that we don't have much of a drop shadow. I kind of got lucky there. One thing about the homing ammo, it stacks on top of your regular ammo. So if you have like a hundred you know, units of regular ammo, and then you have some other, and then you have some homing ammo, you can't alternate back and forth. Um, you have to exhaust all of your homing ammo before it switches you back to regular ammo. And that could be a little frustrating at some points because there's times where you're trying to shoot something specific, but there's an enemy nearby and the homing ammo wants to go toward that enemy instead of the thing that you're trying to aim at. I mean, it doesn't happen too often, 
but you know it, it can happen which makes it kind of annoying because if you're trying to shoot a specific thing that means you have to exhaust all of your homing ammo so it switches you back to regular ammo so you can actually shoot the thing that you're aiming at and come to think of it, I think I misspoke. It doesn't really stack on top of your regular ammo so much as it overrides it. So, yeah, you can have, like, you know, less than 100 of the regular ammo, but if you pick up even one unit of homing ammo, you have to fire that one unit of homing ammo before you can get back to your regular ammo. Anyway, pretty simple challenge right here. It's a little flippy slide puzzle where you have to form Chunky's face. Every time you come in here through any playthrough, it's always scrambled the exact same way, so just do as I did it right there, and you should get it just fine. There, there's no random nature to that puzzle. Anyway, let's see if I can find a tag barrel. I want to switch back to DK real quick, and we're going to do a little bit of up and down and all around in order to gather up stuff with him. It's going to be really quick, actually. He'd ha he does have a bunch of bananas here next to that number five warp pad, and we will, we will immediately be taking it down and heading back inside. We're going to be making use of those barrel cannons we activated by shooting those ammo switches. And of course we're going to need our Super Simeon Slam because he has a blue switch here. And that makes a golden banana up here all the way at the very, very top. And we only have 26 seconds in order to get all the way up there. Impossible to climb that fast. So we have these conveniently placed barrel cannons which shoot us right through the path of some yellow bananas for DK and we land right on top of that golden banana. And that's pretty much uh, all we can do for DK here in the Mushroom Tower, so now we'll move on to Diddy Kong. So we'll be heading back down real quick. There should be, yes, there is a tag barrel right next to the warp pad. And with Diddy, we're actually going to be doing something a little different. We're actually going to be starting at the very, very top of the Mushroom Tower and working our way down. And now you're probably wondering, Mike, how are we going to get to the top of the tower when you just skipped past that number three warp pad leading to the top of the tower? Well, you probably already saw it when we were circling around this area with Lanky Kong our first run through, but there is a bouncy mushroom with some red bananas there. And after, well, okay, well, I was hoping I would hit this jet barrel <laughs> out on my way up, but whatever, got on my way down. And anyway, we have this jet barrel, and we're going to rock it all the way to the very, very top. And, yeah, and by very top, I mean very, very top. Like, well, above the top. And then we'll be working our way down. But we have another one of these turtle challenges. Same thing as before. Just shoot the top three. Reload. Shoot the bottom three. Reload. Lather. Rinse. Repeat. This time, though, they go really, really fast. So there's not much of a margin for error here. I mean, if you mess up too much, you will lose. Fortunately, just like with the version that we ran into in Angry Aztec, it's still only 45 seconds, so it's not like you have to last as long. We'll be having to do this bonus game one more time before the end of the game, and by then, not only do they get much faster, but it's a longer time limit, which means that you have to keep up this rhythm for even longer, giving you, you know, more of a chance to lose. But anyway, there we go. Not too... Not too difficult if you're paying attention and just keep that one, two, three reload cadence in your head in order to keep rhythm. And that's about all we needed the jetpack for. And that's pretty much, I, I think that's Diddy Kong's only golden banana here in the Mushroom Tower. Um, all he has left really are red bananas and of course we saw that splat halfway up. Uh, the tower so we're just going to be working our way down collecting everything and then we'll pretty much be done so this path with the ladder here it leads to a K rule battle arena now that opening uh, is only there if it's nighttime otherwise it's blocked by a moon gate now it is possible to get up oh come on it is possible to get up there uh, with the jetpack so you don't absolutely need it to be uh, nighttime in order to get up there it just makes it a little easier 
Okay, now that I got that initial wave of enemies out of the way, I'm going to try to, and I'm going to fail. Well, and, oh god. Uh, oh shit. Okay, sorry. Um, what I'm trying to do is get all of the enemies' uh, spawning rates timed to a point where I can simply... Uh, to where I can simply stand in the center and spam my uh, shockwave attack and... Okay, so I don't think I'm going to be able to do this strategy the way I want to because they're all spawning at random points and I really don't want to waste a million crystal coconuts. So I guess I'll go about doing it the hard way. There we go. All right. Take you out, and there we go. All right, so that didn't go as smoothly as I wanted it to, but you, you, you can see that at this point, we're going to be dealing a lot with Kasplats in these battle arenas, and the best way to deal with them quickly is to just, you know... Build up, uh, you know, build up a charged attack and take them out with a shockwave because one will, uh, one will take them out in one hit no matter which Kong you're playing as. So that's pretty much the easiest way because we'll be dealing with more than one of them now. It's no longer a sound and effective strategy to keep them all knocked on their butts to prevent them from doing a shockwave. You just want to, you know, kill them all. And what the hell am I doing? Okay, back in the teleporter. I want to work my way down, but not that quickly. Alright, and I don't feel like wasting time running all the way around in a, spiraling, in, a, in a spiral in order to get down, so I'm going to use my little slide trick to just, you know, take a shortcut. And we should land. Yeah, there we go. So, what I got to do now is take out this Kasplat. And now just to collect these red bananas, and we're pretty much done here. So once we get these rounded up, we will be done with the Mushroom Tower, but there is still plenty to do here in Fungi Forest, but that's going to have to wait until next time. And until next time, thank you for watching That LP Show, and have a one that is good.